we got in touch with Lloyd Stovall, an expert in utilizing radio frequencies to produce energy. He is going to break down Maxwell's microsonic energy device, explaining whether it works and why he was unable to obtain a patent. Lloyd has numerous videos on his channel discussing this technology which is inspired by Nikola Tesla's work. You'll find a link to his channel in the description. Now, let's take a look at a picture of his car where we can see that the battery is the core of this system. First, we notice four small black components attached to an aluminum base. The reason they need the aluminum base is essential. My name is Lloyd Stovall and I have been running a media library for three decades. Yes, I have tested these devices multiple times, built various versions of them, and I fully understand how they function. I want to explain how this particular inventor and what you see in the image actually works so that you too can replicate it. This is based on Nikola Tesla's discoveries. Some people claim this is an entirely new technology, working with sonic energy, but they fail to grasp the concept. Now, as we examine his setup closely, let's go over the crucial elements of his system. Even though he incorporates a MOSFET, which serves as a primary driver, it plays a crucial role in what he refers to as sonic energy, making the entire system function. Now, take a look at the yellow component at the top. That is a transformer. Transformers either step up or step down electricity. However, while typical electricity primarily consists of voltage, what we actually require is amps. So how do we generate amps? That is where the MOSFET comes into play. Now, let me introduce you to a term that, that you won't find in a dictionary or anywhere else, but it perfectly describes this technology. Nikola Tesla developed what can be called frequency amps. In reality, all transformers are essentially wireless devices, even if people refuse to acknowledge it. Two coils of wire, separated from each other, prevent amps from passing directly through the transformer's gap. If you ask AI about this, you'll learn that when amps cannot move across to the other side of the transformer, the question arises, how do we generate amps? The answer lies in switching. The circuit on and off at extremely high speeds, a method that produces amps. This is why I refer to it as frequency amps. Now, take a close look at the transformer. You'll notice two sets of coils in a small gap between them. That is the key to how this works. Whether the gap is 100 miles or just a fraction of an inch, amps cannot jump across. The only thing that enables amp generation here is frequency. With over 30 years of experience in my media library, I have thoroughly studied components and their functions, which allows me to understand what I'm looking at here. Those small black components, four of them, are attached to an aluminum base for a specific reason. They heat up. This heating occurs because applying what he calls high sonic frequencies to them results in amp generation. If you ask AI, you will find that this is known as transient energy. This is a subject that most scientists tend to avoid discussing. The reason they don't like talking about it is simple. It means that anyone could achieve exactly what he is demonstrating. Now keep in mind that he is not a formally trained scientist. He has admitted that he lacks familiarity with the technical terminology used in the United States, which can sometimes make it difficult for others to interpret his explanations. When he refers to sonic, remember that he is actually talking about frequency. By switching the MOS FET on and off at extremely high speeds, he is effectively generating amps. The voltage is already present. Nikola Tesla himself explained this concept. He aimed to harness energy from the sky and the ground, step it up, and produce high voltage. His intention was never to transmit high voltage directly. Every antenna he built already had amplification built into it because Tesla's towers functioned as transformers. To clarify, these were a specific type of transformer known as air transformers, similar to how air capacitors exist. So, why do people continue to claim that Tesla intended to transmit power through the air? The actual transmission process involved radio waves, which are electromagnetic waves, and these are also present in transformers. This occurs due to the rapid switching process. However, what is rarely explained is how exactly this switching process generates amps on the other end. The key is frequency, the 50 to 60 hertz that you can see displayed on the device he is using. In this setup, the MOSFETs are feeding energy back into the batteries, just like when you plug a charger into the wall outlet. The battery in turn powers the devices he wants to operate. None of this is new. It is technology that is over a century old. When we go back to the image of his car, we see that the battery is at the heart of the system. 
you must understand that a way to maintain the battery's charge is essential, and that's exactly where the MOSFET comes into play. I've discussed this in many of my previous videos. If you go back and watch, you'll see references to transient energy. You need to become familiar with these terms. Now, for those who may not be aware, a MOSFET is a type of transistor, and rapidly switching it on and off is what produces amperage. Take a look at his video. It demonstrates the setups in his device. I am now showing you an image that highlights where these amps are being generated. This knowledge is widespread in many countries. However, in the United States, people are falling behind because they lack an understanding of transient energy and frequency-based amp generation. These concepts are deliberately excluded from textbooks and mainstream discussions. Why? Because Nikola Tesla's tower, essentially a transformer, was built on the principles of frequency-based amp technology, and in reality all transformers operate on. The same principle. My name is Lloyd Staubel, and I have been running my media library for 30 years. I have repeatedly tested these devices, built different variations of them, and I fully comprehend their mechanics. This technology has been around for more than a century. If you would like to discuss this further, feel free to contact me. If you're interested in an interview, get in touch and we can go over this in detail. I can guide you step by step and demonstrate that if you follow the same principles that I have shown, you will be able to achieve exactly what the inventor in question has accomplished with his vehicle. At that point, you will recognize that he is not deceiving anyone. The only deception lies in the fact that he is using technology that has existed for over a hundred years. This is the primary reason why he was unable to obtain a patent, not because it was a perpetual motion machine, but because it was not his original invention. Countless others, including myself, have experimented with these principles. Watch my videos and see for yourself. This technology is not new, it has been in existence for well over a hundred years. If you look at the results, you will see the amps being produced, which is exactly what is needed when all you have is voltage. I have demonstrated this repeatedly in my projects over the past three decades. My solar power setup operates using the same underlying technology. My solar panels generate voltage, but it is the MOSFETs that generate the necessary amps. That is how I ensure my energy supply remains sufficient. If you want to learn more, watch my previous videos or contact me directly. If you are truly interested, let's arrange an interview and I will walk you through the process in full detail. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I wanted to make sure this information was shared and I have reached out to you to provide proof that I have done so.